Well, today we're pleased to have First Responder Safety Training Workshop, which is really geared to train the trainers in various elements of our community. Those that uh, deal with fire response, those that are in a, uh, ambulances, those that drive tow trucks, those that educate at secondary and, and, and primary levels of education. And those are the folks that are here. We've got a great variety of people here. We're quite excited about that. And it's going to explain the various alternative fuels in modules so that they can then transmit that information, that education, onto their potential arena, whoever it happens to be. National Alternative Fuel Training Consortium, our mission is to reduce the dependency on foreign oil. We understand that first responders, if, the, if they're not properly trained, then what would happen is it, the fuel uh, that was involved in an incident would not be, uh, it wouldn't be a positive experience. First responders are highly trained before they take our training. However, what we do is we train what's different about alternative fuel and advanced technology vehicles. And it's the most important that they have this training. College of the Desert has been a big player at the Coachella Valley for quite a while. We've teamed up with Sunline, uh, very interested in alternative fuels. We were contacted by the Clean Cities Coalition and also with West Virginia University and we're really excited that they decided to pick our facility to do this training. We are extremely happy to be working with the Coachella Valley Region Clean Cities Coalition and Clean City Coalitions all across the country to deliver first responder safety training under the U.S. Department of Energy's Clean Cities Learning Program. Thanks to funding from and support from the U.S. DOE's Clean Cities Program, the National Alternative Fuels Training Consortium developed this critical training program in order to train first responders on how to properly and safely respond to an automotive accident involving an alternative fuels or advanced technology vehicle. It's extremely important that the first responders are trained in alternative fuel vehicles. There's a large number of them that are now uh, coming out on the roadways today. And so far, the training in these vehicles for us has been very minimal. This class provides an opportunity for first, for first responders to come out and actually get a hands-on look at these vehicles, have an idea of how they work, and then know some of the safety features that are built into the vehicles that should work for us to help render those vehicles safe. There hasn't been training like this yet really on a large scale basis for first responders. This program is on the cutting edge of the technology that's out there. The first responders that are being trained here today are learning new techniques, they're learning about new vehicles, and they're learning about new technologies, and the training that they get, then they can go out and utilize in their day-to-day -day jobs, and this is really an amazing opportunity for those first responders. The one thing that I think I could take back to uh, my department is the fact that there's no standardization on these alternative fuel vehicles. They're all different, and a first responder needs to be prepared to tackle just about anything and that could be specific to each individual vehicle. This is one big area of need and concern in our first responder community and we need to enhance the skills, knowledge and abilities of all of our firefighters and first responders to be able to uh, know how to uh, adequately respond to these types of incidents. Basically our life depends on it. If we don't have this training then we're not uh, trained to work in the field in different situations with all these different vehicles. Obviously today we've already learned some extensive stuff about cutting into the wrong spot. You can get electrocuted. So far it's been a great benefit. Every first responder should go through this type of course. The whole issue from day one is removing barriers and not only barriers for the general public who we hope will use these vehicles and get us off of foreign oil, but certainly for those that have to look after us, whether it's a mechanic or whether it's somebody driving an ambulance or a tow truck, they need to be comfortable so that they can do their job in case the need arises. And these kinds of programs help do that.